the Sony a7R5 is launching this week. And with that, it means that this camera right here, the Sony a7R4 is no longer the top dog as far as the newest camera with the highest resolution from Sony. With that said, I thought let's go down memory lane and do one final review on the Sony a7R4. So this is it, let's check it out. The main thing about the Sony a7R line has been resolution. When you go for the R line, you're going for high megapixel counts. And with the a7R3, you were talking 42 megapixels. And now that you had the R4 and now the R5, you're talking 61 megapixels. And for me personally, when I'm talking about doing portrait work, when I'm talking about doing documentary work, I find that incredibly useful. So one thing that I find resolution for is just being super sharp when I put this on different platforms. So if I'm doing documentary work or if I'm doing photojournalism work for the New York Times or another client and I know that's gonna be used in print or if it's going to be used on a smaller scale, it might end up on somebody's Instagram feed to promote something there, then I know that all the details that I capture using that higher resolution will look incredibly sharp once they're put into a smaller format. Also, when I'm thinking about the future and how these photos can hold up down the line, the fact that they're at such a high resolution means that if I decide to do something with them later, then I have the ability to print them, I can crop them in, or I can reduce them to a smaller format, and I still have all that detail there versus trying to take a smaller file and then enlarging in that. Because of the high resolution, over the course of the pandemic, it's been extremely useful for photographing subjects at a distance. So having that high megapixel count, I can step further away from a subject, I can make sure I get everything in frame and compose it like I normally would, but I can still have the freedom in order to crop down and get the shot that I'm looking for. As someone who had come from the a7 III to the a7R4, I found that the generational jump from the body difference was a big, big upgrade for me. Having a nicer thumb pad and having the ability where the grip felt much nicer, the ports on the left side felt a lot tighter and cleaner, and I didn't have to worry as much about getting something messed up. It, it was just more comforting to know that I had this solid camera in my hands and it made everything so much easier for me to use. When you use it with the grip, then it just became this very sturdy, very robust camera that I love shooting portraits with. One of the things I'm looking forward to in the new camera is the new multi-angle flip screen thing that you could fold it out like your older Sony cameras, and then you'd fold it to the side like the FX3, which I'm shooting on right now, or the A7S3, A7IV. So I think that's gonna be incredibly useful for getting shots at different angles where you might need just a little bit of help, and having that multi-angle screen is gonna be a big benefit for that. Another thing that I've loved about the a7R4 is the color science. Now, this is a subjective topic and people might have different opinions. I personally, coming from the a7 III and then using the a7R4, I noticed a noticeable jump in the color science where everything felt a lot more accurate when it comes to things like skin tone, something that I care deeply about when I'm photographing subjects. And because of that, I often went more towards the a7R4 as my camera of choice when I'm out on an assignment just because I knew that color science was there. And if I needed to do any video work, I also felt comfortable using the a7R4 as a video camera because I knew that the colors would be so on point. I knew I had to do minimal work as far as editing unless I wanted to do some additional tweaks in post. Mostly what the a7R4 has meant to me is a shift in direction. So having a 61 megapixel camera, that means I can take portraits, I can do documentary work, I can do all these very studio-like assignments or studio assignments, and I can make sure that I'm getting the highest detail possible that I can then deliver to my clients. And for me, that has been incredibly useful. When I'm looking at the photos that I've done for fun, I can still see all that detail that I could then use for projects down the line. So 
for me, this camera has been a definite game changer. And I'm hoping with the A7R5, we see a lot of new things that can help even further ex the experience of shooting on the A7R line. But yeah, that wraps it up for this video. This is a excellent camera still. If you are looking for a camera and you are looking at the A7R line um, and the A7R5 might just be out of budget, the A7R4 is still a fantastic camera. It is capable of so much and I would highly recommend it. That's it for this video. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check me out on Instagram and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next video. One.